everyone and welcome back to The Journey. As you can see today, we're going to be talking about pediatrics, in particular muscular dystrophy. Now with muscular dystrophy, it is a group of diseases that pretty much causes progressive weakness and um, a loss of muscle mass to the, the, the body, okay? There are some abnormal genes or your mutated genes that attribute to um, the production of muscle proteins that helps to aid in healthy muscle growth, all right? Now with that, more than 30 uh, inherited diseases or 30 inherited genes is what plays a part in um, someone who is going to exhibit or have a disorder of muscular dystrophy, all right? And there are nine different types of muscular dystrophy, all right? Now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the main two that you see um, as frequently asked during NCLEX, uh, in pediatrics, okay? Um, so the first step we have is Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Now with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, it's most common in childhood. And this is just a little fun fact that I kind of just threw out there, but with every 10,000 male births, two to five males is going to um, have, this, have this disorder, all right? So not that common, but again, you know, it definitely plays a lot into the male population, all right? Now, with the muscular dystrophy, one of the um, uh, characteristics is pseudohypertrophy. And what pseudohypertrophy is pretty much enlarging up the muscles, right? Because of an infiltration of fatty tissue. So where you see muscle, it is actually fat. So you probably have probably wondered if, <laughs> Um, some bodybuilders, right, or some, you know, macho, big, muscular guy, you know, you wonder if it's fat in there because sometimes it looks so big so and, and so strong, but then when it comes down to it, they can't open a jar, you know, they can't do certain things, okay, but, um, no, I'm just playing, those people have real muscles, but you can kind of think of it in that aspect, okay, so their muscles look bigger, but really and truly, they have no use because it's not muscle that's in there, it's fatty tissue, okay? Now, X-linked disorders, okay? So, X-linked disorders, I want you to automatically think about the mother. Think about the mother. So anytime you see X-linked disorders, think about the mother. And with X-linked disorders, Remember, the male population is going to be the main ones that are going to be affected, all right? And the reason for that is because a male uh, chromosomal deposit makes up of X and a Y. When you see that X and the Y, you know that that is a male. When you see two Xs, you know that is a female. Now, if, if a male um, have muscular dystrophy, right, it is on the X chromosome. Who, who does he get that X chromosome from? The females, because the females only have XX. So um, the mother is going to give that X, the father is going to give that Y, which makes the boy. Now, if the disease is on the X, that lets you know that that disorder link came from the mother. Not saying that the father couldn't attribute or, or you know, um, related to some of the, things, the genes, the mutated genes, but it's solely X linked. So that means that it's from the mother. So most of the time, a guy only has one X to work with. And if that X is already a dysfunctional or mutated X, they're going to have it. They're going to exhibit the symptoms. They're going to have um, that disorder. Whereas a female, right, you have two X's to play with. So even though mom's X is not good, that X may be great. And when they come together, now you're just only a carrier rather than exhibiting the whole signs and symptoms. For a female, they will have to have two out of two. So they can get lucky with one out of the two, but if they have two out of the two, then you know for a fact they have muscular dystrophy. Whereas a guy, they don't have that possibility. If, if that X is, um, is, is a bad gene, as a mutated gene for this criteria of muscular dystrophy, dystrophy, that guy now is going to have muscular dystrophy because he does not have any wiggle room to play around with, right? He has one X, and if that one X is bad, that is it. Females, we have that leeway of one X may be bad, but we have another one that's good. So we may be seen as carriers, okay? So um, anytime you see any X link, not just with muscular dystrophy, but any X link disorders, think about the mother and think about the males being affected, okay? if that helps in some type of way. 
also the onset is from three to four years old now that is very very young which again most common in childhood this is when you're going to start seeing or exhibiting um the attributes that makes up muscular dystrophy all right now with the muscular dystrophy there's a protein right one of the proteins that we were talking about that's needed for healthy growth it's pretty much going to be dystrophin all right so uh, i like the fact that it's called dystrophin i don't know if muscular dystrophy was called or named because of this particular pro uh, protein that is being affected but even if so that's a great way to kind of remember muscular dystrophy the protein dystrophin plays a part okay if, if that makes any sense whatsoever now dystrophin is a muscle protein and what it does it helps to keep the muscle cells intact all right and um, a lack of the dystrophin uh, cells causes the muscles to be very fragile and easily damaged okay now with Duchenne muscular dystrophy okay I know it's like a tongue twister <laughs> but the dystrophin proteins are non functional so what that means is pretty much they're not working so the body may make them right but remember they're making it based off of abnormal genes so remember your genes in our, our code in um, directions to tell your body how to make you you right how to make your hair how to make a skin cell how to make an eye cell right um, how to make your heart muscles every every part of your body is made up of genes that are giving uh, codes and directions into how to replenish and make that thing again all right now there's something with the coding there's something with the directions right when you're trying to build a shelf or whatever and you don't have the right directions, um, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to build that shelf the way it needs to be built because based on the directions, it's giving you wrong directions. So that's pretty much what's going on here. It's wrong directions that are being given and one protein that is in particular that is being affected is the dystrophin which helps to keep the cell muscles intact. If I don't have that, my muscles are going to be as frail and as damaged as a baby, uh, a new a new baby, okay? So even as a grown person, my muscles are like a baby, right? M not much of anything, right? Can't really do anything. Now we have the Becker's muscular dystrophy, and with the, the Becker's, it's similar to the Duchenne's, the only thing is that it's a milder form, and also the body makes just dystrophin, but it is partial partially functional okay so whereas Duchenne is non functional at all this one is partially functional all right and by it being partially functional it makes um, this is pretty much made up in a shorter form of this protein so instead of not having anything it's a shorter form of this protein which at least help aid to protect the muscle um, and slower the rate of the progression of this disease okay so with this said Okay, it is an X-link, just like the Duchenne's. The onset is later in childhood, usually rating after five years of age, where Duchenne was three to four years of age. Okay, so not that much of a difference, but it's definitely later on in childhood because it can happen at eight years old. It all depends on the child. Okay, also the child is mobile up until the late teens, whereas in Duchenne's is a lot sooner that you see these uh, children with a disability of not being able to be mobile, all right? And they still have normal intelligence, all right? But they can uh, have congestive heart failure because again, this is a muscular problem. So when you think of muscular problem, don't just think about the extremities, right? But you also have to think about every component of your body that deals with the muscle, right? And your heart is pure muscle. So, you know, if, if it's not working or it's not being strengthened to do what it has to do, you know, your, your heart can fail, okay? And then you also have contractors, which eventually over time, you know, not being able to move and do certain things. And, that, and this is just for anyone who doesn't have muscular dystrophy. If you're not moving your limbs over time, your body can get contracted because those muscle memory and those movement, those fibers are not being used. So they, they deteriorate over time. They lock up, all right? So you can definitely see that. Also, the death usually occur within the third to fifth uh, decade. So their life expectancy is a lot longer than Duchenne, where Duchenne is typically maybe around um, 
uh, teenager years. Now we have the clinical manifestation, which is also known as our signs and symptoms, which is also known as our nursing assessment. And these are pretty much the signs and symptoms that you're going to see with Duchenne's and Becker's. They're very similar, but I will point out to you the ones that relate to Becker's and the one that um, relates to Duchenne's. Now, you are going to see delayed walking, frequent falls, they are easily tired when walking, running, or climbing, all right? They are toe walkers, okay? So they tend to walk on their toes, and as you can see, there's some people who naturally kind of walk on their toes even without having muscular dystrophy, so don't go around thinking that everyone who walks on their toes have muscular dystrophy because that is not the case. But um, with that, you're going to have hypertrophy calves, so your calves are going to look bigger than normal. So those are um, the people who do walk on their toes, they tend to have bigger calves just because they're working out that muscle a lot more, it tends to get a lot bigger. Whereas muscular dystrophy, dystrophy is the shrinking of muscles, right? It's, 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 it's not functioning at its optimal level. So yet they're getting bigger, but remember the pseudo, pseudotrophy, hypertrophy, is pretty much, it's getting bigger, but it's not muscle, it's fat tissue. Okay, so it's a, in, in a replacement of fat tissue that is building up in that area. So that is what makes um, certain body parts or muscles um, look bigger than normal. Okay, but it doesn't mean that the muscle have grown or they've gotten stronger. It is just being replaced with fatty tissue. All right, they also have the widening gait. Okay, so they're going to be walking like so. And then you're also going to see mental retardation frequently seen, and it's going to be seen mainly with the Duchenne's, okay? Whereas the Becker's, like I said before, the cognitive um, intellectual uh, ability is still intact, okay? Now, as you can see here, I have the same exact um, term, just in a different phrase, which is your intellectual disability. So this is the term that was used before mental retardation, but now that word is so offensive, and you know, it, it definitely doesn't come from a good place. So um, they have changed it in the recent years to intellectual disability. So the phrase is now intellectual disability. So if you ever hear that phrase, just know that that's what they're talking about, okay? It's a nicer way to say that, you know, this person doesn't have the cognitive ability to perform at a, a, a level of what someone on an average level can, can do, okay? So it's a nicer way, nicer term. If you see either or on the testing way, most testing are gonna come like this, it's pretty much the same term, all right? Also, you're gonna have a positive Gower sign. I am going to show you pictures of what Gower sign is, okay? It's a, it's a way of how the child gets up from the floor, right? Because those muscles are now weak. They're not able to just, you know, fall down and then come back up. It's a whole process, step-to-step -step process. So I will show you picture by picture by picture, showing you exactly how they um, have to, to, to get up from the floor, okay? And then you have lordosis, which lordosis is pretty much, like I, would, I like to say, an exaggerated back, right? So you have an exaggerated curvature around the lumbar area. So now we have the diagnosis for muscular dystrophy, and what that consists of is pretty much clinical signs and patterns of the muscle involvement is what's pretty much going to be used to diagnose and classify uh, this disorder. Now it's going to be confirmed based on biochemical exams, okay? So that pretty much means your serum assay, um, enzyme assay, your muscle biopsy, right? All these different things and their uh, electro uh, myography as well, okay, is what's going to confirm this diagnosis. Then within the serum, right, anything that you see with serum, we're talking about within the blood, okay? So when you do your blood work, there is an element known as um, creatine uh, kinase, which is pretty much something that talks about or um, explains the muscles. Right, and a lot of times you will see this CK or CKMB when you're dealing with a patient who has um, cardiac problems, okay? Because they want to see the muscle, what's going on with the, the muscle of the heart, okay? And with this CK, it is increased or elevated early in the disease process. So in the early stages of the disease, it is elevated, all right? Which is also a sign to let you know, hey, there's something going wrong, going on with the child's muscles, okay? And 
Also, you have your genetic testing. Now, with your genetic testing, you can test the mother, test the father. Of course, the mother is going to be the one, the main giver of this. So you definitely check to see, you know, any um, inherited genes or any of those chromosome, chromosomes that would cause um, a mutation of the cells, okay? As far as treatment, okay, there are no effective treatment, you know? So if you do have a child with muscular dystrophy, it's mainly how can we stabilize and um, keep at a maintenance level of what you do have and how can we uh, slow down the process. So that's the main concept with treating, okay? Is how can we maintain what we have and how can we slow down this process of it being deteriorated, okay? So with that said, there are some research in, pro in process of gene therapy as far as using the stem cells. So, um, you know, hopefully, you know, with more technology and more education, we will be able to find a cure or find some substitutes um, that can be generated through the stem cells to provide that, um, that need of proteins to help build and store muscle, okay? Also, you have re rehab therapy, and with the rehab therapy, it's pretty much to maintain and to stabilize what is already there and to help them to be as independent as possible and still be able to do things as a kid because ultimately they want to run and jump and kick and play. They want to do these things. So you want to be able to help them in a safe way um, carry out independence and be able to do some activities for themselves, all right? Steroids is also used to preserve muscle function and some of the steroids that they do use is prednisone and adelphazaport is also uh, a medication that can be used. And then last but not least, ultimately, um, you know, with the progression of weakness and deformity, that does result in a chronic disability um, within that patient, okay? But our whole goal is to not get to this point. We want to try to prolong and um, stabilize and maintain whatever muscle strength that we can get or obtain. And the last thing is your nursing intervention. So as a nurse, the main thing is you want to focus on promoting independence and mobility, okay? So you also want to be watching out for cardiac and respiratory functioning because again, those areas, you know, um, have muscle around them. The heart itself is a muscle. So you want to know and make sure that this patient is not going through congestive heart failure or having heart problems or respiratory problems where they're not able to breathe efficiently. So if they do have any respiratory problems or respiratory infections or so, you definitely want to encourage coughing, deep breathing, um, exercise and treatments like your nebulizer treatments, okay? And ultimately, if um, it is an, you know, an infection, definitely antibiotics, use of antibiotics, okay? Also, you want to check out for the GI and GU assessments, okay? Because they may have poor appetites, you want to make sure that they're maintaining and their body is able to maintain bowel, proper bowel function. They also may need to um, have, you know, increased um, nutritional intake or like high uh, um, calorie supplements like your insures and, you know, Lucerna, things like that. So definitely as a nurse, you should be checking out for the different parts of the systems and do your assessments to make sure that, you know, for this child age and height that, you know, everything is adequate for them, okay? And just watch and observe their eating habits and, you know, do they have a poor appetite? Are their body able to facilitate? Are they having proper bowel movement? Same thing with the GI, with the with the GU tract as well, okay? They're able to go to the bathroom, they're having problem urinating, they're having proper intake and output, right? So all those things you wanna watch out for. Also, uh, the obvious, stating the obvious, range of motion. So ROM is your range of motion and your muscle strength because ultimately that is what is affecting your muscle. All right, so you want to make sure that you can at least, you know, lift your your arms, wiggle, um, uh, move your fingers, wiggle your toes, push against resistance, you know, are you able to walk, you know, are you able to turn in bed, you know, simple things that we take for granted, you know, these, these, these children are not able to do. So you definitely want to make sure that you're assessing the range of mov range of movement and trying to see what we can do to maintain and stabilize that area. Also, developmental and nutritional assessment, which I already talked about the nutritional assessment. So the developmental part is making sure that are they growing efficiently? Are they are you know are they like regular kids where you know 
their height and weight is matching up or you know are they are they healthy for where they need to be in their age group okay you also want to focus on what the child can accomplish what they can do it is already frustrating that there's so many things that they may not be able to do that the last thing that they need to know is what they can't do so encourage them you know praise them let them know wow you did such a great job doing this or doing that whatever it may be whatever they accomplish focus on that okay it will make them you know strive for more and you know make them come with a better attitude with you know treatments and things like that also you want to tell the parents or teach the parents to individualize their educational plan especially if they have Duchenne's um, just because that one does um, mess with intellectual disability so you want to know okay how can we individualize this plan is reading books something that is good or maybe they need to listen to tapes you know or watch a video like what you're watching right now but it all depends. Everyone learns differently. Everyone grasps and takes in everything differently. So you want to definitely individualize your plan based on your child and what the needs that they may need. Also, family support. Big thing, big thing, big thing. Because, you know, you're, you know no one ever is prepared for the possibility of having a dis disabled child. Okay? And just to see your kid have to go through something like that, you know, I can only imagine what it feels like. So definitely you want to make sure that you can give your support to the parents, um, emotional care for the child, and other siblings. Because remember, this child now becomes a focal point, focal point in this family's aspect where the other child may feel neglected. You know, um, they may feel as if, you know, mommy and daddy pays too much attention to the other kid and not enough attention on me. Or sometimes they get so frustrated with life in itself because of, you know the disability that one child is not able to do that they kind of not think about how the other kids are feeling or are are affected from this situation so definitely want to get the get, um, get them involved you know give them toys and things like that as a nurse if you see the other kid there is being you know neglected you want to kind of point that out to the family like, hey you know kind of go over to the to the to the child and say you look, you look so handsome today you look so good you know what's your name you know, here, here's a sticker for you. Here's something for you to just kind of bring awareness to the parents that, hey, yeah, we do have other kids as well. Okay, so you definitely want to kind of um, be there emotionally. Let them know that they have support groups available that they need to join. Um, and, and, you know, support groups, hearing other family members and what they have to go through is encouraging and enough. And at least you know that you're not alone doing it. Okay. Also, you want to tell the parents to meet with the teachers to evaluate the child's learning ability and their needs, okay, what they need to, you know, um, be as effective as possible, efficiently, okay. Also, last but not least, you want to have good back support and posture by keeping the child's body aligned when they are confined to a wheelchair. So there are times where some kids are going to be wheelchair bound and you just want to make sure that they still have a good posture and um, their body is able to be in good alignment. Okay, so that is pretty much it. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Also remember to check out the description box for all added information. And again, if you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'll have that link in the description box as well. And once again, thank you for coming on this journey. I'll see you on the next one.